almost a, basically a 4% correct number ratio. That's pretty good. That's not bad. But if we can increase how many dials we do to get a correct number, then all we need to know is how many correct numbers do we need to get a lead. See, the problem here isn't that this flow isn't working for you. The problem is, is that. All right. Welcome to the Real Estate Dojo podcast. Its acronym is RED, R-E-D, um, because we help trying to remove those red lines from your PL. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, today we have Dylan Good. Um, he's out of North Carolina. No, that's not where he's out of. We'll bring him on and we'll let him re remind me. He virtuals in North Carolina and uh, he's starting in Florida. Um, as always, we're going to break down what he's got going on in his business. We're going to talk about the tools he's using. Uh, we got some KPIs here as well as um, what he's struggling with, right? And then we're going to give him uh, some feedback on what we think he should be doing right now to get like a better um, result from what he's, uh, what he's doing. Uh, looks like in general, um, it's going to be uh, marketing cycling is really what it boils down to. So let's bring him in here real quick. Let's get rocking and rolling. Dylan, man, appreciate you hopping on. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. For sure, man. Where? Literally, you told me like three seconds ago, but where is it you're living again? I'm in West Virginia. Oh, so. West Virginia. Okay, not yeah. North Carolina. West Virginia. He's yeah. in West Virginia, but you're marketing in North Carolina and you're starting in Florida. Right. Okay, we got it. Uh, and you've said that so many times too, like in the community and across everywhere. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to go through now um, and and just kind of read some of the stuff that you submitted um, and, and, and just give people an idea, okay, what you're having trouble with. So what are your struggles in your business you're having? Please be as direct as possible is what we say in our, in our submission form. Um, and it's having trouble generating leads. I was cold calling about four calls a day and contact rate dropped like crazy. Um, you switched to the niche sensei flow process style marketing, which is essentially a process that REI SIF, um, kind of, um, uh, not created, right. But we kind of deemed it as a sensei flow, which is, which when you're doing sequential marketing and, and one-off marketing to, to, uh, really specific data sets. So you're using tier one data, which for you is your tax delinquent code enforcement, um, decease auction data, uh, and PFC data, uh, which is pre-foreclosure, right? Right. Okay. Um, your VA would call a first attempt, then you'd send a text message. You would call a second attempt, a text message, and then a third attempt, and then a text message. Um, no answer. I would send direct mail out, uh, send records we couldn't reach to be skip traced through a different provider. Um, we then would repeat the calls and SMS flow. And then if they still weren't reachable, they would be sent to deep prospecting. Deep prospecting meaning that you're researching siblings and, and digging into you know all the other things that could be going on with this with this person that owns this property, um, and treat it as a, a go no go, meaning never give up on that person. Uh, we would reach out to the heirs. We are one month in and haven't generated a single lead. Oh my goodness, what the hell? Um, we are using air call for calling and SMS. Um, what is your current business size? Let's see. It is just me and a VA. Uh, right now we are doing about one deal a month on average with the majority coming from your local market. Uh, the virtual market is where I'm having lead issues. Uh, so first bit of advice would be then what, to, then don't, don't do a virtual market. There's no point. If you're having lead issues there, then don't do it. Just stay in your local market. If you're getting deals from your local market, go deep in your local market. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not possible because there's other people probably in those markets doing deals. Um, okay. So tell me now, um, cause I don't see it on here. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. You're, you're using air call, REI, SIF, prop stream and skip genie, um, as tools and your marketing strategy is sensei flow for tier one, uh, air call as a dialer, REI, SIF as the arms for data management. Okay. So Explain this to me really quick. Um, I, and I do see your KPIs here. We're going to, we're going to read those KPIs here in just a second. But what I want to understand is like, where are you trying to get to? What I would really like, um, something about my market, my home market. It's a, it's a little bit of a strange, a little bit of a strange kind of area, you know, here in Charleston, West Virginia. So there's not a lot of investor activity. I fix right. and flip here. Um, I buy and hold here. But wholesaling here is really, really tough because, you know, including me, 
uh, there's only like three main flippers in the area and they mm-hmm. source their own deals. So wholesaling is kind of, kind of tough, not saying it's impossible. I just hope just assigned one here, yeah. but as far as doing it to scale, it's not really doable here because there's just not enough buyers to support that. Um, as far as, you know, doing flips like we do or, or getting some cash flow properties, it's, it's a, it's a good little rental market. Um, the reason I went virtual was to try to build out a wholesaling business that I could essentially work in and build and scale to the point to where it's very lean and very efficient um, to the point to where I can maybe spend, you know, 15, 20 hours a week in it and, you know, be pretty, pretty comfortable and still kind of gain some back, back some of my time. Cause obviously, you know, fix and flips, um, some of the stuff I'm doing is kind of longer money. It's not as quick and not as right. consistent, I guess, as, as wholesaling. So I wanted to build a wholesaling company to, you know, be able to build that consistency and know that I have, you know, three to four deals maybe, or even two to three deals um, coming okay. in a month. Cause that, you know, I'm just really trying to get to um, back up to, cause right now it's like, uh, you know, the struggle even, I, I get a deal, my bank account replenishes, and about the time funds go out, I get another deal. And it's just right. kind of playing up, down, up, down, and nothing consistent. So Okay. So so a couple of things. Really what you're doing is you're trying to wholesale in a virtual market so you can produce more active income. That's that's like the, the cut and dry version of that is is that you're trying to to have more consistent, you know, revenue in your business. The answer that to that isn't necessarily wholesaling first and foremost. The answer to that is a volume in general, right? Like if you had 10 flips, right? Then they would all close probably if you're bringing in flips in your local market every single month, then you would, you would have it where it would trickle in where you'd have consistent revenue. Um, and even if so, if, on a quarterly basis, you'd be bringing in so much more revenue that it wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be looking at it the same way. It's, it, it's a, it's a twofold of management of money and, and, and deal flow. So, um, now, again, I'm not super familiar with your local market. If that's possible to get that kind of like flip volume or if, the, if that many homes are being bought, you know, in your local market. Um, however, uh, you know, I, 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 I sometimes want to challenge the thought processes of, of you know, okay, we're going we're gonna to try to, you know, go into a specific market like Charlotte or somewhere just because there's a lot of, you know, houses there and it's a lot of wholesalers or there's a lot of investors there. And that's going to all of a sudden be a reason, you know, that we're going to be able to produce more revenue in our business. When a lot of times it's, it's repeating the things that we're already doing that's working and just doing it better. And, um, and so let's kind of read these, some of these KPIs real quick. So uh, December's KPIs were that you talk, you, you reached out to 380 prospects. Um, so this would be equivalent, for example, for those that, 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 that need the correlation, that would be like door knocking 380 houses, right? Um, out of those, 27 of them became uh, go no goes, meaning deep prospecting. 89 of them were not interested. Okay, so so I want to break down what this means from a KPI perspective here in a second. But keeping in mind that not interested in the correct numbers is important, and then wrong numbers. So not interested, 89. Correct numbers, 128. Wrong numbers, 308 disconnected 1078 sms is sent 1032 you then received 135 back which i'm really glad that you're tracking that 12 of those properties sold seven phone numbers said don't ever call me again and then 1781 were no answered which is a total dials of 3205 which if i do the math on that Okay, 3,205, divide that by 380. It's an average of eight phone numbers per record. Okay. Now, are these from Skip Genie, these phone numbers? On the first? Uh, it, it's a mixture. Um, I had a lot of stuff that was skip traced already through Batch, and then we ended up re skipping it through. Um, I think we were trying out, kind of testing, trying out some REI sift, uh, some skip matrix, and then Skip Genie, uh, I usually use Skip Genie only for like my single, uh, my deep prospecting. Okay. Um, I use Skip Matrix as far as if I had to re- The first re-skip bull, something. okay. All right. So here's the thing. I, what you want to do when you're when you're analyzing KPIs is you want to look at where is the time being spent. Okay. If this is 380 prospects, this is a whole month, right? So this is theoretically 
Um, this is two, and there's two people in the business. There's you and there's the VA, right? Is this only the VA's KPIs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is one single VA. Um, that's eight hours a day. Yep. So eight hours a day times five is 40 times four is 160 hours, right? 160 uh, or 380 divided by one si to divided by 160. That means to exhaust one record, to call through one record is taking them two hours. Yeah, that was a lot of the a lot of the beginning of December too was th this wasn't probably the full month because we were just getting started. So I was just training her a lot. Um, she was getting used to it. We was kind of developing out, um, you know, everything. She's got a lot. She sped up a lot more now. That okay. We we've got everything in. And okay, as long as as long as that's happening, but even still, let's take this back a little bit and let's say, okay, you have 380 prospects. We have 89 that are not interested. Okay, so that puts us down to 291. 128 correct numbers. Okay, um, but that doesn't necessarily add up. Not interested in correct number ratio. And wrong number ratio. Well, the correct number and the wrong number, it's 128 and 89. A correct number could mean they're not interested. So there's a differential there, right? You see what I'm saying? Like you got 128 correct numbers and only 89 of them are not interested. Well, what about the other 39? Mm -hmm. Are they interested? Are they leads? Like what's going on with those other correct numbers? I don't know if she pushed some of those to some of them are sold. Uh, some of them are possibly uh dnc um you know correct number but but dnc um okay so that's right I, that it could be the sold we could say the sold if it is a sold then that's great because that means hey well the only problem is that you didn't get consistency then would mean that they hopefully sell to you next time right uh, that's 12 mm -hmm. if you would have been doing this uh two months prior you know maybe those 12 would have ended up being opportunity for you right mm -hmm. um Okay, so 135 back. Uh, I think we're catching up on inter uh, the internet. It's catching up. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, I'm good. You're good? Okay. Um, 135 SMS is received. I don't know what the response. If I'm going to do SMS received, I would like to know, like, is there any, what's coming in? Are there correct numbers from there or what? But in, in the end, man, I mean, your KPIs, you only hit 300. You only got 380 people here. Okay. So you, you just don't have very many, you know, records, it's 380 people. Right. And so 3,205 dials, um, is a lot of dials, but again, most of those dials are, are disconnected numbers, um, and no answers yet. Half of them are no answers, right? 1,781 of them are no answers. So a hundred, hundred out of the 160 hours that she did, um, you know, half of them were spent dialing numbers. There were no answers. So how can you figure out how you can reach more people? Well, stop dialing so many numbers, right? Don't dial all eight or 10 of them. Like you need to narrow down and, and only do like the first five, for example, and see how that affects your KPIs, right? Because if you do only the first five and you're having the same correct number ratio, this is why correct number to dial ratio is really important because as of right now, you dialed 3,205 numbers you have 128 correct numbers, 128 divided by 3205 is a almost a, basically a 4% correct number ratio. That's pretty good. That's not bad. But if we can increase how many dials we do to get a correct number, then all we need to know is how many correct numbers do we need to get a lead? See, the problem here isn't that this flow isn't working for you. The problem is, is that the people that we've spoken to far aren't wanting to sell their house. Right. So that's 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 more narrowing into the type of individual that's picking up the phone. Right. So instead of having like up here, you have like a bunch of different, you know, uh, types of you know data that you're focusing on. Um, focus on one type of it. Like we got um, please. Where's that tax delinquency code violation, deceased auction and pre foreclosure. Um, choose choose only like one of those. Okay, so like tax delinquency is a, is a great one um, and deceased is a great one. Deceased is going to have a lower contact ratio, but I would focus on tax delinquency just to get your bearings because everybody, you know, with tax delinquent stuff is going to have to go at some point. 
And so from an REI SIF perspective, filter by just a tax delinquent list, right? Whether it's stacked with shit or not, doesn't matter. You're focused on just tax, your tax delinquency is your core value there. You're going to focus on the tax delinquency. You're going to start working through that data and you're going to track it only because as of right now, the problem we have is it, you know, we don't really know what our core is. If this is multiple different types of data sets inside of these 1,000, you know, 30, 3205 dials, out of that 128, how many of them are tax delinquent? How many of them are code enforcement? How many of them are proof of closure? Um, you know, which ones were correct, which ones were wrong. What is, what is the higher contact rate that we're having based off of the vexation? Um, so I like to start off with one primary vexation. I know like tier one data makes it seem like we have to stack a bunch of shit, but really what it is, it's about, it's about focusing on one type of data set that has multiple variables on it that we can then become first to market to by consistently marketing to those individuals every single week, every single month. And then once we get that new data in, Right. Then we can take that new data um, and we can be the first one to hit those individuals. So um, for, for me, what I would say is go ahead and focus on just tax delinquency um, and get to the point where we're correct number uh, ratio from like a 4% up to like a 10% um, by trying to dial less numbers. OK, so dial yeah. less numbers um, and continue doing everything else you're doing and just focus on how many people am I talking to? Uh, because it's not, we don't even have very too many go no goes, you know, either. We only got 27 go no goes, which is typically about a 75% ratio that ends up being a go no go. And that could mean that we didn't dial through all those records multiple times yet, right? It might not have been where, you know, all 380 of those have went through. But as of right now, uh, 27 divided by 380 uh, is about 7%, right? Um, and typically, you know, what we see is out of all the dial throughs, if you go through and you dial through three times and you do all the things, you send the direct mail, you're going to end up with roughly about 75% of your initial data sets going to end up going to go, no, go. Um, so either way, you're doing good tracking everything. Um, we just don't have enough data to, to, to find like a true problem, but it doesn't mean that we can't focus this effort in um, so that we can get more, you know, more results. So 3,205 dials, um, for only 380 prospects tells me that we're dialing too many numbers. So um, think about it this way. You know, if you were to do this same scenario in bulk dialing, you would have dialed those 3205 in one day, right? Right, right. Um, and in bulk dialing, they say, what should you get between one to two leads a day, if not four leads a day? Do you think right. that would have happened if you dialed these same 3,205 numbers, if you dialed these in one day, do you think you would have got two to four leads out of it? No, probably not. Yeah. I don't, um, I, I don't think so either because there, and, and you wouldn't have known who it is that you wouldn't have got results from. So I think, I think what you're doing is great. I think what you're doing is right. I just think that we need to narrow it down to a specific location in that specific market, be it Charlotte or whatever, and, and narrow in on you know, tax delinquencies there in general, um, focus the, the type of data that we're marketing to in and, um, and then hit more of them. And, and honestly, um, I would be making sure you're going back and listening to those 128 calls that were correct numbers. Okay. That's, that's a, another huge, huge component of this because again, there's a differential there that like, okay, some of them DNC, some of them not interested, but how did those conversations go? So making sure you're doing that. Um, right. Yeah. And I usually do, usually do like a call calibration kind of with her, um, yeah. you know, once a week we'll listen to a call, we'll pull one up. I'll work with her. And she's been working with me for about a year and a half. Um, oh, I've been trying. Yeah, she's she's really she's one of the, you know, not just saying it because it's mine, but um, uh, she's she's one of the better ones I've I've heard on the phone. You know, okay, she's perfect. she's actually pretty good. Great. So so what I would do, man, then is I would I would narrow in on tax delinquency, and I would do the sensei flow for um for a period of the day, right? I wouldn't I wouldn't let the sensei flow be the only thing she's doing. Um, you know, I, what I would do is I would, I would have that her focusing on, you know, tax delinquent data, um, and, and hitting, you know, X amount of records a day. Um, again, at, at, at least minimum 25 a day, like we should be having, you know, um, close to let's see, 25 a day. Yeah, she, she's hit 50 today. Um, okay, a little, perfect. a little over 50 today. So that's what we were shooting perfect. for. I told her like in the beginning, let's shoot for 30 and then we'll bounce up to 50 once you get used to the process and everything. So. Cool. So then after she does this, once she gets this rocking and rolling and, and you guys have a really good you know system about it. All right. Then what I would do is I would add in back, add back in call tools 
or ready mode or whatever you're using, uh, preferably probably call tools, um, just because that's what most people are, are using, um, in terms of, uh, the dialers, but we have a lot of users that use ready mode. Um, but go ahead and, and, and add that back in on a single seat, right? Uh, just one, one person. Uh, it could be even this, this same, uh, VA uh, and just hit straight, like absentee data, no matter what the situation is, just do straight absentee. Um, no matter what the situation is and, and just aim for typical triple line dialer, you know, efforts there for at least three hours a day. Okay. Um, and, and track the KPIs the same exact way that you're doing here. And the reason why we're doing that is we're just really trying to work through some more data and, and pick up opportunity. We don't want to let, we don't want like, um, we don't want to solely focus on this and then lose opportunity over here because we don't have our line in the water. Right. So I talk, I talk about the, the fishing analogy and like the auto legion challenge and stuff like that, where you, you, know, you put your line in the water over here, but you might chum off the back and, and, and then sooner or later you might dive down and do some spear fishing. Right. We want to make sure that we have um, a well-balanced marketing strategy. And the, the, the sensei flow is going to make sure that the direct mail is going out. It's going to make sure that we're hitting the, the top vexation and, and, and top individuals, but then we're going to go ahead and do some, a little bit of why we're not going to like, you know, waste money over here though, doing wide approach because we're, we're still being, you know, smart with it. Um, but you know, you're not trying to kill it. You're trying to do, you know, three hours of calling just to make sure that, Hey, if someone picks up and they're wanting to sell, then fantastic, but we're not wasting time, um, or, or resources there. And then now we can dial in those two KPIs and we can use that sensei flow metric, right. To keep our dialing on a bulk dialer in check. Like, Hey, well, my correct number to dial ratio on sensei flow right now is like at a 4%. If I go into bulk dialing, it's at a 2%. Like, okay, is that a problem with my settings on a dialer or is that something that I should expect? And, and then you can have that, um, that, that understanding to scale. You say, okay, I'm going to hire maybe three people over here in sensei flow and two people on the dialer. Cause I know that my correct number to dial ratio is higher on sensei flow. It's slower to get a hold of more people, right? Because I'm not just burning through phone numbers. Um, but the, the whole overarching, um, you know, resources that are being, uh, utilized for it, uh, over, over in the bulk dialing, it's utilizing a lot more resources because after we bulk dial through the list, now we're going to have to SMS through the list. We're going to do all the other shit. We're going to send, you know, we're not going to know who we're not reaching, um, compared to with the sensei flow, you're going to know that for the, you know, the tax link record. So, um, okay. Uh, so. KPIs look fine. 380 records. It's not, a, it's not like an overarching amount. Um, we're going to try to get that to where we have at least a thousand um, prospects before we can really have a good idea, right? A thousand prospects is what I tell people um, is what you want to do to get a good baseline KPI. Um, for any marketing strategy, typically 90 days is what you really want for a really solid KPI. Um, but I feel with the Sensei Flow, it's so focused and it's so in tune with uh, tracking that after a thousand prospects, it's equivalent to doing 90 days of cold calling in a bulk dialer. Um, mm -hmm. and so, um, do that. And then also, um, another way that you could expedite things a little bit, if you really wanted to, depending on budgetary items is you could start off direct mailing your whole batch of, uh, individuals that you're going to sensei flow, like the tax delinquent list in itself, you could put it on a 90 day, uh, direct mail sequence where you're sending, uh, let's say it's a thousand tax delinquencies. You could send a thousand people, you know, a, a postcard and then start calling them. And then you could, you could use as your opener, Hey, yeah, we sent you a postcard. We're just calling to try to see if you received it. We we're interested in that property on one, two, three main street. Right. So you can change your approach that way. That way in a given week, you send that first direct mail out. You could create some inbound on the most motivated individuals. Then you could use the phone to try to reach people you're not reaching and then um, if you end up exhausting them, at least, you know, you already sent that direct mail out and that return mail that you would have got after, you know, a couple of weeks of, of calling them through Sensei Flow, and, and then you finally send the direct mail, that return mail that would have already came in, you can then prioritize those for the deep prospecting rather than everybody. Right. So okay. um, there's a lot of, you know, obviously things that we can narrow down and go down, but what I would say for now, let's go ahead and get to where we get to a thousand prospects. Let's focus on tax delinquency only. And um, let's work up to where we can, uh, um, you know, get in an actual lead. Because as of right now, 120, I will say 128 correct numbers and having no leads is is low. Like that, there's something weird going on there. Right. And that, that's, um, that, that was my thought as well. Like, um, you know, I was thinking, well, this many days we were at least reach this many people there should be and these were people that was you know maybe four four stack five stack you know pretty 
pretty high end, uh, you know, supposedly should have had motivation. Um, so and that's, that's why I'm kind of scratching my head. A little bit. Cause sometimes, sometimes like the multiple stack stuff, um, is the total opposite of motivation, right? Because there there's multiple stack for reasons cause they can't make decisions. Right. Um, and so sometimes it's the opposite of that. And that's why we got to under, we got to kind of feel out the vexations in the market and figure out what's yielding the results so that we know, you know, like a lot of pre foreclosure stuff, not very much motivation there. They ain't paid their mortgage in how many, you know, months or years. Like they're, they're clearly okay with not making a decision or, or not doing anything about it. Um, tax delinquency can be the same thing. Um, you know, so you just got to feel that out, but I would, um, I would venture to say typically by 128 dials, like correct number, even a bulk dialer at 128 correct number ratio, you're, you're probably having at least two leads by then. But in a bulk dialer, you would have to, you would have already dialed a crap ton more phone numbers that you would have burned through before you would have got 128 correct, um, verified right. numbers. Right. So and I had her send me the, like a 10 to one, 10 to 15 to one just depends. Um, yeah. So, so we, I, we have, we have this, this month, um, we had 95 or 153 correct numbers. Um, she was off a little bit because she got COVID. Um, but we had 153 correct numbers and that was with, we got nine leads, but the nine leads that we got was in West Virginia was here in my home market. Um, there wasn't okay. any leads. There wasn't any leads come from the virtual market. And, you know, now are you combining that data together when you're marketing? Are you calling in both or is it two separate campaigns? Like you're using two separate, separate filter presets or what? Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be, they'll, I just separate them with the tag. Uh, they're, they're all in there. She calls them. They all go into the need work category and she'll call through them. And the only thing that changes is the air call number that we call with depending on okay. the area code. So, so, I mean, I would, I mean, that's pretty good. It's typically, if you got nine leads in West Virginia, um, look at those nine, figure out what their problems were, look at the activity log, look at how long it took till you reached them and narrow down on those nine. If, you, if you've already got, I, I forgot this is December, we're, we're just hit February. So looking at your January stuff, you, you probably can narrow down in what I just said and figure out where you need to focus on from a, from a data perspective. If it's West Virginia, man, then... Right now, your importance is not trying to start an operation in North Carolina. Your importance is trying to build consistency in what you're, what's already bringing you money in your household, right? So I would, if you got nine leads in West Virginia, then then um, then then get twenty, right? Figure out what it needs, what you need to do to get two deals a month in, in West Virginia, right? Um, if you can get to where you're doing two to three flips a month in West Virginia in your local market, even if you're keeping them all yourself, and your only obstacle is, well, how am I going to get all the money to be able to keep all these properties? That's an easy problem to solve. Right. If you have a right. bunch of properties that have 30%, you know, uh, equity in them after you flip and get them ready for rental. And your problem is, you know, how do I hold more properties? That's, that's an easy problem to solve. Right. Deal volume is a thing that everyone struggles with. So, um, don't necessarily think about one market versus the other market, follow what's working for you. Okay. And then once you can see in that and it's predictable and you, and, and you remove that intrusive thought of not getting deal flow. Now we can replicate this because we have something that's steady. So um, look at those nine leads, see what's going on. But 120, 150 to get nine leads, that, that's pretty much on par. That, I think that, most of them was probate. Most of them was probate uh, leads. Perfect. So. So, so focus on probate. And then um, probate is beautiful because what, what's beautiful about probate is people continue to die all the time, right? So um, And so what happens is, is once we get caught up with all that data, all that probate data, now we can figure out how much probate data can we bring in on a weekly basis, brand new in our market. And we can build really predictable business because if I know that on a monthly basis, I'm going to get hundred new probates. Great. If I know it, it takes a hundred prospects to get three leads in probates then I know every single month I'm going to get three leads. And if I know it takes 10 leads to get a deal, then I know every quarter I'm going to get a probate, you know, flip, for example. Right. And so that's the kind of predict predictability we want to build. But we got to understand, you know, how many how many human beings do we how many, you know, prospects, how many correct numbers do we need um, in order to get a lead and how many leads to get a deal. Um, so I would focus on West Virginia, dude. I would look at those the data, 150, 120 to 150 correct numbers to get nine leads is good. Like that's that's mm -hmm. fine. The question is how many now leads to get a deal. Well, a, a lot some of those some of those probates were where we just started. Obviously, I went back and pulled some of them. So some of them was getting caught up. 
So we had yep. kind of a we kind of had kind of a surplus of probates. You know, my market's pretty small. Um, probably, I, I, I market in four different counties here, yeah. just to be able to get enough data, kind of to, to 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 find a motivated seller. We probably have a hundred to hundred fifty thousand people in the four counties that I market to. Um, yeah. So so you know finding or getting enough probate data per month. Sometimes, sometimes we get a decent amount. Other times it's, it's, it's kind of dry. So it's the, very... the thing is that you're going to, what, what you, what you got to do is you got to build predictability in what it is, right? So if it, yeah, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high, but that's great when that happens. It's a good thing when you get caught up and now you're just waiting for it to come in. Right. Because now, great. Now I'm going to start focus on tax delinquency or whatever in West Virginia. And I'm going to do the same thing for that. And then sooner or later, this is how you become the market, like the premier person in your market, because you get really good at probate. Now probate is locked in. I'm just waiting for the data to come. As soon as it comes in, our SOP fires, we market to those people, the people that we don't reach get continuous direct mail and we get our deals and boom, I know that every year I'm going to get 10 deals from probate, let's just say. Right. And I'm doing the same thing with tax delinquency. And then, cool, I got that locked in. Now I'm going to do the same thing with code enforcement. And slowly but surely, you start being really good at all, like, say, your top five vexations. And it's not about probate being the number one thing that is making you the million dollars a year. It's about, you know, having everything right. Now, some people in some markets can. They can focus just on probate and they could, you know, crush it because there's a really huge population. But those people, what they end up doing is they don't only focus on private, they focus on all this other shit. And then their businesses don't have sustainability and reliability because they're not just, you know, the probate kings. Um, and so you're in a you're in a really good position. The fact that you have the capability to become so much easier market, you know, uh, resilient. Right. And so what you need to do in West Virginia is you need to be that person in probate. You need to be that person in tax and be that person in code enforcement and then focus really heavily on branding. Right. And once you get all that locked in, be known as, as Dylan Goods company being the number one company, premier company to buy properties from in West Virginia, especially in those five counties. Right. Well, let me ask you this. The, the data in this area is kind of hard to get. Um, I haven't been able to find how to get tax delinquent data. I've went to the courthouse. Um, you know, the only thing they'll give me, I went there multiple times and the only thing they give me is, well, it's in the paper right before the auction, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm trying to get it quite a bit before that. Um, I can get probate. Uh, one county's online, the other county, I have to physically go to the courthouse and get on the computer at the courthouse and, and pull the probate data. Yeah. Um, but what I was doing before, before I kind of went to Sensei flow here in here in West Virginia, I was just pulling, you know, these towns might have only had four or 5,000 people in them. So I was just pulling every record and hitting it and um, kind of wanted to be more specific, not blow through so much money because I was spending, you know, three, four thousand dollars a month when it was kind of unnecessary. I yeah. just wanted to get really proficient and and lean and be a lot more efficient instead of just throwing stuff at the wall and throwing everything around. Um, so what, what would you recommend here in this market where it's kind of hard? Like I can't really find pre foreclosure data. I can pull substitute of trustee on like, um, you know, some, um, some of the County websites, but, um, a lot of data is hard to get. Not a lot of code enforcement here. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff outside the city, outside of city limits. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I would focus in on what's working and, and, and I would work my way out from there. Like I wouldn't, I, I necessarily wouldn't be asking myself that question until I got to the point where I needed to care about it. Right. And, and I think that um, right now um, there's a lot of, you know, direction you can go with probate even still, even if you pull the probate after you pull the probate um, they're starting to do online ads, you know, uh, they're starting to post in the papers, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of other marketing strategies, you know, to focus in and be dominant in a niche besides just pulling the data and calling somebody. Um, and and that's where I think some people get a, a, a little wrapped up is because they, they think that, you know, it's like, OK, well, I'm just going to be cold calling or I'm just going to be, you know, doing this. But no, but to 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 become super dominant in it, like we got to build the whole thing, like the Viking ship marketing. Right. Like we we have you know, the data, great. We can get ahead of these people, but we need to be, we need to, 
we want to also be known as, as, as the person who, if, if I know someone's sick, you know, and I'm going to, I'm going to, if I know like uh, someone in my family sick and, and I, and I know they have a house, then I'm going to start doing my research probably ahead of time to figure out, well, what am I going to do if in fact they do pass away? And I want myself to show up as an option for that. Right. And so it's a balance between creating the ability to do outbound, creating the ability to, do, to get inbound, and then also just being known. Uh, and so I, I don't think that's really something I really ask right now. I think it's something that um, once it's the time to do it, then you can do it. But right now, I, I think you should narrow in on what it is that's working. Um, and, you know, out of let's say there's, you know, out of the probates that you do have, you got nine leads from them right now. And, uh, and cool, let's say there was uh, 500 probates um, or even say 300 um it's nine that are leads how many were correct numbers what are the ones that didn't answer yet maybe my next thing is that i need someone to go door knock or i need to start researching better like i in lower markets it, it's going to be more common that you might have to you know speak to more more siblings for example right. well the good thing about the good thing about the probates that we have um is they have the fiduciary's phone number from when they filled it out right on the paper. Okay, so then, so then, so then here's another thing that, that just comes up then is that these aren't just, these are probates. These aren't pre probates. This, this doesn't include the people who never filed probate. Right. So right. that's another uh, like layer to peel back. Like well, we're all the people that have died, right. That haven't filed for probate yet because they don't, maybe the siblings don't even know the person died. Maybe they just don't know to file probate. Maybe there's squatters in the property, whatever the situation is a whole another pre probate deceased, you know, layer to this as well. Right. So um, I, I think that you can really narrow in in West Virginia. I think crush. I'm sure that I'm sure that like there's some people crushing it across West Virginia, some pretty big companies, I'm sure. Um, there's not many, not many in my area. I know there's some on the other end um, of West Virginia up towards Maryland in the eastern panhandle. Yeah, um, I know there's some guys up there in my area. There's not a whole there's not a whole lot going on. Like I said, I know I'm friends with pretty much the the other two main flippers right in the market here how are they getting uh, deals um a lot of them's doing direct mail um and i know both of them's doing direct mail and one of them focuses on probate you know with direct yeah. mail a lot and a lot of times they'll buy from the auction to the foreclosure auction so so you got to get ahead of whatever deals they're getting right look at when they get it when you hear that they get a flip look at it and figure out what's the history of that record like how, how come it's not yours because that's the other thing like even if there's only two other people doing it in your market let's say they're getting 10 deals a year each right like right that's i, I know one's doing i know one did close to 50 deals last year well fuck, dude yeah. there's plenty dude there's plenty in the waters in west virginia they do 50 deals then you can fucking do 100 right so i'm saying like like so so focus in on how you can really do that. Like uh, it, it's, it's a slippery slope, uh, especially as a two person operation, trying to branch out into another market, man. Like it's, it's very slippery. It's a lot of attention being shifted over here. There's a lot of KPIs we're thinking about over here. There's a lot of things that we're thinking about. How can we, you know, create revenue over there when in all reality, creating a local meetup for yourself, you starting a meetup an investor meetup and, and bringing in people that are interested in investing. And now that's an organic deal flow. Like there's a lot of things you can do in your local market um, to where you can, you know, uh, keep your feet, you know, on the ground uh, and, and produce free money while also having your really, you know, tight knit operation. So that, that's what I would recommend, man. Um, that's, that's my process. That's my model. That's what I, I believe in, especially in smaller markets. Um, and I think that, uh, once you get that done and once that's consistent, you know, if you want to hop over into another market, then, then fantastic. But I mean, a market like Charlotte, uh, for example, in Florida, anywhere in Florida, uh, that's big. There's a fucking shit ton of people from all over the world. Like literally, like we have users at REI SIF that are in other countries marketing in Charlotte that are business yeah. users. Right. And so, so why, what, well, like why, why delve into that when like, when, when, you have your, your, your West Virginia accent that you can go knock on grandma's door and see if she wants to sell a property. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I would, I would tone that back and I would, I would focus in more on, 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 you know, what Dylan good can do in his local market. Um, so any right. quick for me, man? No, no, I think that's about it. Um, you know, focus here, 
Um, you know, like I said, that the only reason I was trying to go virtual is trying to build something to where I could kind of somewhat automate it a little bit. And do the same thing. Have, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not how, how could you automate it more in a, in a state away from you or two states away from you than you could where your feet are sitting on the ground? Well, just just the fact that you're not able to wholesale a whole lot here. Um, and because of because of mill sizes, um, the sizes and just finding buyers, just like I said, the buyers. Is, buddies, is right? if, if you bring a deal to your, your, your two, your two buddies, right? Right. If you got a deal tomorrow, that was a great deal. Would your one of your buddies buy it from you? Yeah, I just assigned one. Um, I just assigned one. You know, a lot yeah. of times, a lot of stuff, it's kind of a really weird market because properties are cheap. You know, West Virginia has some probably the lowest median home prices. Right. Pretty, pretty low. You know, probably some of the lowest in the country. And a lot of places we have to turn down just because we would have more money in the property than what yeah. it would be worth when we're done. So, uh, so try to pull those kind of zip codes out of your, out of your marketing if you can. Um, but again, recognize where there's opportunity in like, locations like that. Right. So um, I, I think, I think it's, I think really the thing is you got to understand your market and where the money's at a little bit more. I think if you do that, if you focus really in on that, uh, that much more, I think, in five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, because I mean, we're both young, right? I think that what you'll realize is that you would have wished you would have stayed in your market and you would have bought every fucking cheap house that you possibly can. Right. Right. You know, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah. there's, there's opportunity in a lot of different locations, right? Um, you could, you could start market marketing in California and say, cool, I just need two deals a year. You know, I'm with my hundred K spreads and that's great. Um, but you know, I think if you were to get consistency where you're at and then you're to take that and say, okay, cool. Now that I have this, I have this all locked down. I'm just going to pick this up. And I'm going to go into another area of West Virginia that has higher medium house prices or, or, or somewhere that's within a two hour radius of you, whatever. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I do think that right now where you're at your consistency, if, if it was, if you're doing deals in West Virginia, continue doing deals in West Virginia, wherever your money is being made, make more of it there. Like it, it's so much more money. If someone else got 50 deals, man, like how many, like yeah. last year, last year or whatever, you know, you get 10, 20. I probably got, um, I think I was right at five or six, seven five last six. year. Yeah. So it's literally five times your business, you could five times your business. It's not the location that's stopping you. Right. It's, it's something else. And, and, so let's fix that. If it's bidding at auctions, then what's stopping you is is probably revenue to buy at from auctions, maybe. So fix yeah, that. Yeah, that, then I need to find you know more private more private money. Um, yeah. We don't have any hard hard money lenders in the area, so basically you have to have your own cash or or private money, um, yeah. so, and that makes it you know living in an area like this. There's some around. I've talked to a few people. None of them's pulled the trigger yet. Um, but just being in kind of a lower income area, I guess you would say overall, there's not a lot of people. I guess it makes it tougher in in some ways to find some private money because there's not yeah, so as many people. Money. Look at the deals. Look at the deals you've done. Create a, a, a pamphlet of like what the spreads have been on, what spreads can be on flips on your market. Listen, as a private money lender myself, right? Like, like if I hear of an area that I can give 50 grand, for example, and they can put 10 grand in the property and we can sell it for a hundred grand. Like we do the, all those all fucking day. Like that's so much easier. You can turn money faster in lower income markets, lower mm -hmm. income markets. Like if, if you can be all in for 125 grand, like in, in Charlotte area and in a lot of places in North Carolina, um, you know, you can be all in on properties for 125 grand and still make 30 or 40 grand. It's fucking crazy. That's awesome. Right. To be able to yeah. get 25 grand, right. From $130,000. Yeah. That, that's, that's like what we are here. We shoot for like a, a 30,000 minimum profit on flips. And yeah. typically we're all in right around 110, 120. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Dude. Like, like that's like flippers absolutely love, you know, hard money lenders or, or private money. People love that because of the fact that um, they're good rental markets. So if it doesn't work out, it can be a good rental. Um, it, it's, it's easy. Cause if you only, if you have, let's say you have a million liquid right now and I'm lending at, you know, 8% APR, 10% APR. Mm -hmm. Right. And you were to push that money out. 
right? And you can, and, and there's vo enough volume that you can turn. That's so annoying. Uh, you can like us today. A million around much faster, right? And, and diversify. So there's not as much risk. It's not all in one deal compared to my local market. It's 350 grand, right? So you only do three deals. It takes 90 days, uh, six months, right? So you can't turn it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit more per deal, but um, it, it's just, it, I think that you could, if you would break down the deals and everything, I think you could get some private money. I, I, right. I knew you could. So, so let me ask you this in this market, this is what we run into a lot. Like I said, we run into turning down a lot of deals, um, because they're not deals, but how would you focus in? Would you focus in and look back at all the past deals? I, I guess I've done. Yep. and try to build that avatar out for for that so I can find because like I said the hardest thing here is not getting leads it's getting the lead where everything works out you know get where the house price it's is right where they're more leads. yeah that's it it's just the lead metric in your market maybe you need 20 leads to get the deal I was, because I was one in 20 because everyone wants to sell their house right yeah I, I was I was getting a contract every 22 leads here is where, yeah. where my metric was. Yeah. So, so, so just, you know, increase marketing and, and, you know, get to, to narrow that in. I, dude, I think, you know, everything that you need uh, to, to do what you're doing. I just think that you're fearful and, and you're using the, you are, you honestly, man, to be, to be straight up frank with you, you're using the word in this market way too fucking much. Your market, okay. ain't different. You, 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 like your state ain't no fucking special state, right? There's however many, 50, some of them in fucking, I don't know, like, like fucking, they remove Pluto from being a planet and they add extra states in the United States all the time. I don't really understand uh, how many states we have now, but it's, it's enough to say that um, every state has your kind of market inside of that state. Uh, there's a lot of weird states out there. That's so annoying. Um, West Virginia is a freaky state to begin with, you know, uh, you know, the only thing I know about West Virginia is Mushan. Like, so it's kind of like uh, in general, Bro, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> you're gonna crush it, dude. Just, just implement the things we talked about, and uh, I, I think that's. Um, I think you know what you need to do. Just stop, stop using your state as the the problem. There's money in your state, all right. Um, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta make it work, make it happen. I'm not saying that virtual, you know, wholesaling ain't a, ain't a good thing or it shouldn't be done. I'm just saying that I think for you right now, there's no reason to do it, and I think that's that's hindering your growth i think you know i think that you're smart enough to, to to recognize that there's you know money under the pillowcases of many of these people's houses so sure cool um all right man well this whole muting me and whatever thing that this is doing is really irritating me so i'm going to go ahead and end it at that um if you ever need anything of course reach out to the team uh, we'll probably chop this up a little bit and try and get it down a bit shorter um but um, I appreciate you hopping on, man, being vulnerable with everybody and letting everybody know, you know, what you got going on in your business. But, dude, you're doing good, man. Uh, you're really low overhead. You're getting leads. Like, most people aren't even where you're at now in terms of confidence and being able to generate uh, even a dial, right? You got a good VA. Um, you're going to crush it. You're going to continue to crush it. You've already done good. So let me know if there's anything I can do for you, okay? Cool, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dylan.